We're off to a great start. I'm doing terrific. Uh, a lot of people are worried about becoming more like their parents. I'm not worried about that at all because neither of my parents is Mr. Rogers. Uh, I'm 20 years old, but like today when I got home from work, the first thing I did was like change my shoes and put on a more comfortable sweater. I didn't like get out of work clothes and check. No, I was like, fuck that. I'm just gonna argyle sweater this bitch up. Um, yeah, thanks, bud. Uh, yeah, I uh, had an embarrassing situation recently. I get rejected a lot, uh, partially because I'm a salesman, and, but mostly because I'm an ugly single dude. And uh, yeah, like, and so this happened to me not that long ago. I was asking a girl out, I said, hey, can I buy you dinner next weekend? And she rejected me in the second nicest way anyone has ever rejected me. She said, I wish I could say yes, but I'm already in a relationship. And I was like, that's a great way to say no, thank you. I was like, thanks, you know? Uh, but then, have you ever seen a movie and been like, nobody's that awkward in real life? Jay Banks is that awkward in real life. <laughs> I just said, like, I said, you know, hey, you have a great night anyway, which would have been fine if that's where this story ended. But that's not where the story ends. I was like, have a great night anyway. High five for Team Spirit. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, because I'm smooth. You know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that happened. And <laughs> the worst part of it is, I'm a pro at getting rejected. I usually just like go home and jerk off. But this time, I get in my car, and then uh, Big Girls Don't Cry was on. And that song has not been on the radio in three fucking years, okay? But now I'm vulnerable and a little bit tender, and fucking Fergie needs to do this to me right now. <laughs> this is what we get collectively as a society for allowing Jack to play what he wants. <laughs> we fucked up, guys. Okay? <laughs> uh, couldn't it hit me with, like, come on, Eileen, or something that would have made me feel better? No, big girls don't cry. <laughs> Fuck, guys. <laughs> so that happened. And I forgot the cardinal rule. Like, I, I tried asking a girl out who, like, likes herself, you know? You got to realize that, like, the only genuine selling point I have is that... If you wake up next to me, your life's only getting better from there. Like, I can be your rock bottom. You know what I mean? That could That's be a it. shirt. What? That could be a t-shirt. I can be your rock bottom? <laughs> Hell yeah, I could. But it would have to have a picture of Dwayne Rock Johnson. Um, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how my life's been uh, recently. I fucking... I had an ex-girlfriend of mine bitch at me today because she suspects some of my jokes are about her. She's not wrong, but she is a bitch. Um, <laughs> that, I'm not saying, I, I don't call women bitches usually, but she is. You know what I mean? I like to preserve uh, uh, the meaning and the effect of it. I want it to be degrading and awful because you're an awful person, you know? And she was like, I have, a, I have a joke, uh, I'll just tell you the joke first, how about that? Uh, a lot of people accuse me of having mommy issues. Uh, in fact, I had an ex-girlfriend break up with me because I asked her to be Big Spoon and read me the Chronicles of Narnia. You get, yeah, it's, that joke's hilarious and you're wrong if you didn't laugh at it. Uh, no, and then she's like, you need to take me out of your material. And I'm like, what? And she's like, I never promised you sexual favors. What? What are you saying? And like, I deleted her number in my phone, so like, there's a random number bitching at me about me accusing her of promising me sexual favors. So I was really confused for a little bit. And I don't know, that just happened to me today. So it's not funny yet. It probably will never be funny, but. I'm not funny yet, and I'll probably never be funny, but it's, uh, it's a work in progress. I, uh, I got a new job, I sell insurance now. Uh, 
Used to have a job selling security systems for a company called ADT. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, but when I got that job, I didn't realize how many security systems racism would sell. <laughs> Made the road, signing a guy up. He's like, Jacob, I am glad I invested in this because there is a family that moved in down the road who's that way. And I don't speak racist code, so I had to ask what's called a follow-up question. I said, uh, <laughs> what do you mean that way? And he immediately gets defensive, and he's like, hey, it's not about race. And I waited for five Mississippi for him to think of a second example. <laughs> And he fucking couldn't, which made me feel like it was about race, you know? <laughs> and as a fat white nerd from North Minneapolis, it's not like racism was ever a genuine option, you know? And it's always confused me. I remember when I was a little kid, I tried to figure it out. I asked an expert in racism, my uncle David Baker, who's the vice president of a white supremacy gang. Great racist, okay? Dude did not start a VP. Motherfucker got promoted for being phenomenal at racism. I said, uh, Uncle David, why do you hate black people? And he said, because they're so important to white kids. I said, Uncle David, you sell meth to white kids. That's what we're doing in this motel right now. I'm six. I helped set up your beakers, but I... Sometimes, like, I'm up here and the audience is, like, down here and it's, it's weird. But, uh, let's see here. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Sometimes when I run out of shit to talk about on stage, I just go through a list of famous people my mother's claimed to have slept with. <laughs> um, all of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, Biggie and Tupac. Uh, yeah. No, she told me that and I was like, Mom, pick a side. <laughs> and then, I, ne I was raised to never raise your voice at your mom, right? That was like the biggest no-no that there was. And she's, she's small, but she's Irish, so she'll fucking get you, you know? She fucking whoo, whips around and she's shooting fucking daggers at me, right? After I said, Mom, pick a side, and she said, Hey, don't let the West Side ride tonight. Because <laughs> it's a Tupac lyric, guys. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, That man will be singing Irish folk later. Um, which isn't a joke, that is just what's going to happen. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Uh, also, some athletes in there. Um, I don't know if you guys know this about me, I'm a really big football fan. Favorite team, Minnesota Vikings. Uh, favorite period of Minnesota Vikings history, 1999, they had two of the best wide receivers of all time. They had Chris Carter and Randy Moss. And uh, they were so good that you had to try to double cover both of them. And then in the year 2000, after Chris Carter retired, he and Randy Moss double covered my mom. <laughs> no, obviously that did not actually happen. But it's way funnier if it did, you know? <laughs> I did that joke once at a different variety show at Galactic, and there's just this rapper in the back who's like, Yo, she a legend! <laughs> That's the funniest shit ever. <laughs> Alright, Ski. Thanks for inviting me on. You guys enjoy the rest of your evening.